In this video, I am continuing my search for budget RC drift gyro options. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy and this is Roadside RC. If you follow the channel, you'll tend to find me drifting and bashing and crawling and racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. And if you follow the channel, you'll see that I've been pretty passionate about trying to help feed people get started with rear wheel drive RC drifting on the cheap. And one of the ways is always looking at a gyro. Now, my go-to gyros, honestly, the Futaba GYD450, the new Rev D gyro, both of those really, really good. The Yokomo DP302 V4, also really, really good gyros. But all three of these are in that like 80 to $100 range. And so there's a lot of folks out there that are really interested in something maybe a little bit cheaper. In this video, we're going to be looking at this Yeah Racing Hack Slider Mini Gyro. This is the V3, and we're going to be installing it in my drift car and giving it a shot and seeing how does it perform. In the package with this Yeah Racing Hack Slider, you do get a little tool for helping to adjust gain and for hitting the switch. It does have a two-in-one plug, kind of fancy. This says it's a four-prong, which means it's the one that's going to go to the receiver side here. And then it has a three-prong that it says goes to the servo. So you have to plug those in. They do not come pre-wired. They do not come pre-installed. And you just kind of got to figure it out. I have no idea really what this one's supposed to be for. It looks like it's another four pin like it would go in here and maybe give you some level of extension somehow. I'm not really too sure. But um, you can tell of these wires. One of them is three prong. So that's going to go to your channel one. This is the single prong. That's going to go to your channel three to help you control the gyro gain. And then this, of course, is going to be the servo output. So should be pretty simple. We're going to get it uh, just double sided taped down to the chassis of the drift car. And with some double sided tape, that yeah, racing gyro is right here on my bottom chassis. Nice solid panel for it to get. Now with this Yeah Racing Gyro, we actually had to move it from the bottom plate up here to the top because these wires that it comes with are really short and so they just physically wouldn't reach the receiver down on the bottom plate. But just as expected, the single wire does plug directly into the third channel. The three-pronged three male plug goes into the first channel and then the female three-prong goes to the servo. So we're going to fire it up. We get a green light, the wheels turn in the correct direction, and when we go, it looks like the third channel is controlling it, and the orientation is correct. So now the only thing that we really need to figure out on it is servo endpoints, because we don't want to try to overextend our travel. All right, now so <laughs> major problem that I have here is it didn't come with a manual, although it says that it's supposed to. And uh, according to online, I don't, I can't find a manual specifically for the Hex Slider Mini online. But we're going to be guessing at some of the settings based on previous experience that we have. So you see how we have a red light, and if we hit the button twice, flashes, flashes, comes green, and. What I would have assumed was happening there was we were going from AVCS to non-AVCS kind of mode, but I can't tell. Um, I can't tell by here on the bench. So we're just going to have to test that in person and find out. So the other thing that we're going to try is in order to set the endpoints, I'm going to hold the button down and power it on and see if we get flashy lights. Yep, we get flashy lights. So then I'm going to turn the gyro one direction. Yep, got a flashy light. I'm going to turn it the other direction. Flashy light. Now my endpoint should be set, which is very important. Helps to make sure that you don't burn out the, the servo itself. So we're going to get to the track, and when we get to the track, we'll actually test out the green versus red mode on here to see what difference we can feel while driving it. So the gyro's in and calibrated to controller. And normally before I ever took a vehicle like this to the track with a change, I'd be testing it here in my garage. But two things. One, I have an impending track day, so I have opportunity to go test it out anyway. And then two, garage is kind of a mess at the moment. And so um, we're gonna skip straight to going to the track. I'm still gonna do some 
the stuff that I would normally do, which is kind of like a circle. How well does it do a circle? How well does it do a figure eight? But then instead of going into my big C that I typically do here in the garage, I'm going to go just straight to on track. So let's let me get all this packed up, head to the track, and we will see what the results are. here with a hack slider mini buddy had the actual full older generation hack slider it doesn't have some of the settings that the mini the newer mini does but honestly it still felt pretty decent i was really surprised the hack slider mini in both red and green honestly have worked really really well no issues i even had even had that guy drive it and it's working really really well Final results as it turns out from this Yeah Racing Hack Slider Mini is it's really pretty good. And again, I wasn't the only one that drove it. I let others there at the track drive it and it really did well. It really surprised me. I expected it to not be any good. Couple things though. It weighs nothing. I mean, there's just nothing here. Um, so if you are kind of like me sometimes going after every last uh, gram of weight on your vehicle, 
this is an interesting choice. Um, the I couldn't ever tell really a difference between the red and green setting, which is really too bad. I'm assuming it's kind of like the Yokomo, maybe the hard soft that Yokomo has, which also I really struggle to tell the difference between the two of them. I can tell that I kind of prefer one versus the other, but really saying what the difference is is pretty hard for me. But if you're out there and you're looking for a budget gyro setup, this is probably about one of the best budget gyros that I've ever found. Now, would I, would I put it up against the Rev-D? Would I put it up against the Futaba? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I feel like there is still, you're still getting a little bit more uh, based on what you're paying for on the Rev-D and the Futaba. As an example, I would completely run this versus the Yokomo DP302. That's just my personal preference. I don't like how the DP302 handles as well. Many, many people do, though. So not knocking it. It's a good gyro for sure. But if I... I'm really surprised how much I like this thing. In fact, the rest of that drift night, I actually drove this gyro for a long time that night. So this was ended up being what I went to. I did not immediately jump back to my standard Rev D Revox at the moment. So if you're looking for one, yeah, Racing Hackslider Mini didn't like the full size one as much. The full size one didn't seem to have quite the same feel to it. But the Mini? really pretty good so um, I'll leave a link to it down below in the video description so if you're looking if you're looking for a gyro and you're curious how much it costs just hop down here to the video description and you can see a link to more information on it thank you and goodbye